From our last video, let's assume that we found out that we are in fact getting power to our solenoid. How do we know it's working? How can we test it? Well, obviously, if the system works, it's fine. If you put the car, turn the key on, you put the car in fourth gear and turn the switch on the cockpit, if the solenoid moves or you can hear it from through the floor, then it's probably functioning. However, there's more to it than that because it can be operating, but operating incorrectly. Let me demonstrate that for you. What I'm going to do is disconnect the wire that went to the solenoid from the last switch, and I'm going to take and I'm going to connect the ground lead from my ohmmeter to ground close to where the solenoid is connected to the transmission. And I want you to pretend for a minute that I've connected these two together. If I connect these two together and my meter gives me a reading of infinite resistance, resistance is what fights electricity. If I have infinite resistance, no electricity can get through here and get to ground. Okay? The reason for that would mean that there is a broken wire somewhere in the windings inside here. If that's the case, the solenoid will not function. It can't function. Now, if I connect my meter and I get a reading like this, this is what we're looking for, something low. It doesn't don't necessarily have to be this one here, but a low reading. Okay? With a low ohms reading, in this case here, less than one. I'm at seven or eight tenths of an ohm. Okay, that means that there's very little resistance. Electricity is going to be able to flow in here, flow through there, and flow to the ground very, very well. Lots of electricity. This is what's referred to as operational current. Okay, we got a lot of electricity going through. That means that the electromagnet in here that's going to come to life, it's going to be strong. It's going to pull that piston back quickly, pull it back strongly, and everybody's going to be happy. But if I have that much electricity continuing to flow through here, this is going to get hot. It will get very hot, and in not too very period, long period of time, it's going to begin to melt the inside of this, and this will fail. It will be destroyed. Now watch this. I'm going to go and push this piston all the way home the way the magnet would do it if it were turned on. I'm a little less than 1 ohm, and watch what happens to the meter. We go up to around 13 ohms, 12 or 13 times as much resistance. I let it relax. We go back to less than 1 ohm of resistance. I push it back down again and we go back up high. Resistance fights current. With 12 or 13 ohms of resistance in here, what's going to happen is the electricity can't get through here like it used to. Very little electricity will get through. That means we're going to have very little heat, and this will survive and do a great job for years and years and years. That's called maintenance current. So operational current, little resistance to get this to operate and pull the piston down. Once the piston gets down, we get down and we stay here with what's referred to as maintenance current. So now, where do people get into trouble? Well, to show that, I'm going to disconnect my leads. I'm going to reconnect up the lead from my last switch again, again. And if the linkage for the solenoid, which connects to this and goes to the valve inside the transmission and moves, if this linkage is not adjusted correctly, it won't be allowed to go all the way up. It'll hit something or bump into something. If this can't pull itself all the way down so she can drop into maintenance mode, She'll stay in operational mode. If she stays in operational mode, this thing's going to die on the job. We get a few calls each year from people who go out and they buy one of these. They buy a second one of these. And they'll call and say, I'm melting these. What's wrong? It means that they're not adjusted correctly. It can't pull itself all the way. So how can we test to see if it's actually doing that? OK, key off. Safely position your car so that you can get to the solenoid. Connect one of the leads from your own meter to ground, close to where the solenoid is grounded. Okay. Now, disconnect the wire going from your last switch and connect your lead to it. Okay. You should get a reading like we just did a moment ago when I had it in my hand. You'll have the same reading in the car. If you get an infinite reading, there's a break in here. But if you get a reading like we, sh we talked about a moment ago where she's nice and low, then everything is fine. Now, what we want to do is reconnect the lead from the last switch, switch, she should pull herself up and get to a high rate of resistance. If she does that, a high rate of resistance, everything is working exactly the way it's supposed to. If she doesn't, if she keeps a low rate of resistance like that, you need to adjust something. And that's how we know that the system is functioning the way that it should.